After two and a half months of running this thing, pretty much 12 to 14 hours a day, seven days a week, it's time for an update. Obviously, I got a ton of questions about this thing. Um, yeah, it's upgraded beyond Vivo because I'm using uh, aftermarket parts. I'm using upgraded parts to make the damn thing more efficient because I'm using a marine setup. I'm not using a recirculating setup, which is a little bit different because I don't live in a very cold climate. I live in a very humid climate, so I have to do things a little bit different. So a lot of y'all have been asking if I still hear the tick of the fuel pump. And don't get me wrong, yeah, I do still hear it because obviously it's a fuel pump with a piston inside of it but it's nowhere near than when the original Evivor uh, provided with it because that thing was loud as hell. So one of the questions I got is do I stand behind my opinion of the fuel pump that I put into it? And the answer is yes. I bought a Nordkaps so-called super silent fuel pump it's still loud as hell it's above 40 decibels but it's way below the 93 or 76 93 decibel range where the old one was in but the reason why i bought a more expensive unit which this one was it's 29 euros uh, 34 euros for shipment it's because of the two-year warranty so if you buy stuff from aliexpress yeah the, the warranty is until your doorstep after that your warranty is automatically void because the seller from AliExpress, they really don't give a shit about you. They're already calculating that to most of us, they're not gonna send it back on warranty. And if it's sent back, I've seen it many times that they're gonna say, well, you're using it beyond the capability and therefore it's failing, therefore it's no longer our responsibility. So when you buy stuff from AliExpress, warranty, yeah, non-existent. That's the reason why I bought one from Nordkap or at least a, a seller that's known to have a pretty good warranty. Let's talk about the combustion chamber. So a couple of you all were saying, oh man, you don't need to change it out, man. It's perfectly fine, man. There's nothing wrong with it, man. You're absolutely right, man. <laughs> it's pretty much a brand spanking new unit. Uh, it only had about five liters, 10 liters of fuel run through it. There's nothing wrong with it. The only thing is, I bought a new one, uh, which is supposed to be more efficient. And yeah, that make way more sense for me to use or put it in there uh, because I was changing on the fuel lines and I had to open it up anyway. So it made a lot of sense for me to just change out the parts and test if it actually works. And yeah, the new one is actually way more efficient in converting fuel into heat because it's dropping the amount of carbon monoxide that's producing by a lot. However, this thing is still perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, the only thing is this type of material I really don't like because yeah, it's already flexing, it's already bending. You can actually see it on the camera, um, which means that the gasket in between it, it's gonna fail or it's gonna leak. And that's one of the biggest problems that I read about on uh, yeah, the interweb, Reddit, uh, Facebook, YouTube, and all that shit. But this thing is perfectly fine. It's, it's an amazing backup. However, I didn't recommend just changing them out because that doesn't make any sense. It's the same with the fuel line. I do not recommend changing out the fuel lines because the green ones are actually way more silent than the so-called newer style white ones, which I didn't like at all. And there were a couple of people were saying, well, the newer white ones, they're, they're more rigid and therefore it's more uh, have, uh, for the diesel heaters and all that shit. But it's also transferring the sound through the pipe by the vibrations and it's going to resonate inside of the, the heat exchanger, the, the casing. And therefore it's going to resonate through the pipes and you can hear the tick inside. Amazing. So I changed it out to automotive black fuel line, which is capable of going minus 40 degrees Celsius all the way up to 200 degrees Celsius. And therefore it's for me a better deal because I get the fuel line for pretty much 70 cents a meter. And I go and I can go to a car shop or a garage and buy it on, yeah, on site. I don't have to wait on Amazon or AliExpress. But that's when you changed out the parts. Why did you do that? Well, first of all, I have a YouTube channel. Uh, I'm trying to show people that it's really easy to fix these things. For me, it didn't make any sense uh, leaving it in because I had to show things, first of all. Uh, people want to see it on YouTube. 
I got a lot of questions when I posted on Facebook. So yeah, I made a video about it, but I do not recommend changing out the heat exchanger of the, the combustion chamber, if it's not absolutely necessary, or when you just want to buy a spare part, yeah, you can change them out because this one is actually way better. The D2 is actually, it, it's producing a lot of heat and it dropped the amount of carbon monoxide by a lot. Another question I got a lot is, did I regret buying a diesel here? A cheap Chinese knockoff and the answer is actually no um, so when Priscilla so my daughter and I was looking for a new robusto unit we had to pay between 2,000 and 2,500 euros for a new unit without installments uh, and yeah that's the, the average price here in Hong for a robusto system however the diesel heater itself it's only about 100 bucks. If I buy a parts kit, it's about 55 to 65 euros. So you can actually physically buy between 20 and 25 units, have 24 spares on a shelf, run one until it's broken and just change it out and still have money left. So for me, it made a lot of sense to buy a Chinese knockoff, improve it, uh, put a lot of uh, upgrades on so I don't have to do that shit in the middle of the freaking winter. Now let's address the elephant in the room and this is a fucking annoying one. It's those guys that actually think they know everything about it but then they're throwing out random fucking numbers on the internet like they know everything about the diesel heaters but based on the numbers they don't even have one um, because they don't make any sense at all. So a couple of people were saying that these things a 5 kilowatt or an 8 kilowatt by the way these are exactly the same the only small difference is the ecu and the controller but everything else is pretty much exactly the same and they will not go to eight kilowatts however a couple of y'all i was saying that these things aren't even capable of running half a kilowatt of heat or to one kilowatt okay but where do you get your numbers from because you don't live here you don't know my setup you don't know the temperatures inside and outside and you don't know the amount of fuel that's running through it you don't know the settings you don't know anything so where did you get your numbers from so let's do the old-fashioned thing and check temperature let's say 77 so 77 is max let's check for fan speed 5.1 meters a second so level one level one it's running 77 degrees at 5.1 to 5.2 meters a second let's put it in chat gpt yeah 1.73 kilowatts that's level one by the way i have nine left to go These things are way more efficient than most people assume. So the lights are ramped up to level 10. So this thing is pushing a ton of air inside. It's high as level. Seven point eight meters a second. Holy shit! I became hot very fast. <laughs> <laughs> this is the temperature, but this time it's still heating up, uh, but yeah, 110, yeah, it's still heating up, let's do this thing, so 123, 123, 5. So now 123.5 degrees Celsius and 7.8 meters a second. So it's doing its calculations and based on the information I provided. But Edwin, you can make it way more efficient. Just use a recirculating setup. Nope, not gonna do it. I talked about it many, many times. I live in a very humid place. I don't live in a very cold place. When you live in a very cold place, it's already pretty much dry throughout the season. But when you live in Holland, it's pretty much all the freaking time very humid and very wet. Which means that inside houses, it's a very high humidity. And in the freaking winter, it's not a really good thing to have very high humidity because it's gonna, well, you're gonna raise the temperature. Therefore, you're gonna get mold, you get more sick, uh, the amount of carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and the humidity it's going to rise over a period of time is just not healthy 
And for us as a family, family and health are number one. Money and efficiency are out there. But when you use a recirculating system, it makes way more sense for a very cold climate. But for a very humid climate, you're better off using a marine setup, even though it's less efficient. That thing works. The safeties work, but it has too much safeties. And in some places, it doesn't have any safety at all. So I've seen a couple of videos on YouTube where people are just running waste oil on these and even though it's not designed to it's capable of but it's not optimized for it so it's going to drip unburned fuel inside of the exhaust but then the exhaust gets hot enough and then the exhaust gets far and then you see a red cherry red exhaust which is about 800 900 degrees which is a really bad thing because it's capable of burning down a house yeah it's really really fucking dangerous because there isn't the sensor in the exhaust, these Chinese knockoff units and even the Wabasta units don't have a sensor in the exhaust. It's all on top of the uh, heat exchanger and that thing is just registering that, well, the temperature is perfectly fine. <laughs> Meanwhile, the exhaust is almost melting. To be completely honest, uh, everything works pretty much perfectly fine. Uh, the ECUs are really restricted. Um, engineer mode for me it doesn't make any sense because yeah you're gonna set the lowest values and highest values and everything in between it's just a calculation of that but airflow and fuel and how it's combust and all that shit is not linear so just basing it off two points yeah those two points gonna be optimized but everything in between it's gonna be random as best so for me it really doesn't matter altitude adjustment that automatically yeah it's a cute cute feature but when you run anything else besides normal diesel for example winter diesel winter kerosene kerosene uh, paraffin oil uh, heavy uh, heating oil or heating oil whatever you want to call it mazout or for example uh, waste oil vegetable oil um yeah that thing is not running perfectly fine based on just altitude adjustment so that altitude adjustment it's it's a cute feature but it doesn't know which type of fuel you run obviously so if you run anything else than straight up no normal diesel it's going to be thrown off completely that's one of the reasons why i'm building in multiple uh, fuels inside of northern lights with the features i'm still waiting on parts which is really annoying these days because uh, restrictions and tariffs and all that shit and yeah the last time I got an update uh, it's gonna take six weeks because of holidays so I've been running this thing non-stop for 12 to 14 hours a day uh, seven days a week for the last two and a half three months so I'm well past 900 to 1000 hours even way beyond that actually and I don't have any major concerns all the safeties work uh, I'm happy with how the machine performs we run it on pretty much all the time at level one maybe two maybe three so on the lower settings um, at the end of the season I'm gonna open it up and see the amount of carbon that's built up because a lot of people complain about these things that there's a lot of carbon built up in it don't know I'm gonna see it at the end of the season or when it's gonna get clogged up eventually so i'm running uh mystery soup but the stuff we got last it's uh, kerosene there's a little bit of diesel in it by the way but it's a very small amount so i don't think there's a lot of carbon build up but yeah we're gonna see how it's gonna look at the end of the season or when it's gonna get clogged up but I think it's gonna be pretty clean. I gotta say it's the best investment we did last year. Some people were converting to the uh, oil, uh, but we chose diesel or kerosene just because we knew that this thing is capable of running different types of fuels. And therefore, we can choose between the one that's the cheapest or the stuff we get for free. Um, but also the amount of air that's pushing it inside the house. It's really important to have fresh air inside of a house. It's going to be otherwise a very toxic environment and health should be at number one. So a diesel heater, even though it's heating up cold air, um, because it's not that cold in Holland, and uh, it will never ever be 
cold again, at least not in my lifetime. Uh, yeah, the damn thing is actually doing its job without a major concern or problem. So this thing is running perfectly fine and it's running smooth and it's just starting up so it makes a little bit more noise. But when it comes to fuel economy, I don't really worry about it because the amount of fuel that's actually running through it, it's not a lot. It depends on which mode I'm running it through. Um, and the funny thing about the unit itself, I wished I bought a parts kit so it's a little bit cheaper. And that's because in the beginning, when I started this YouTube channel, one of the first videos, I was talking about that I may be going to travel with the damn thing, but now it's fixed and all these uh, sensors are hooked up. I'm not gonna, never ever going to take it out because it doesn't make any sense. When it comes to fuel economy, uh, a couple of you all have been asking how much fuel I'm running through it. And the answer is, I don't know. Um, I just fill up the tank. And if it's running 1.5 to 1.7, liters a day or two and a half liters a day or three liters a day i really don't care because i just fill the tank up and i don't know how much fuel it's going to use <laughs> but yeah it, it's it's not that expensive and it's nowhere near if i'm going to use gas for central heating because then it's going to really be up there because one cubic meter of gas is it's around one one euro and 30 cents and this house needs about 10 cubic meters of gas throughout the day to keep it at 21 uh, degrees celsius so it's 13 euros a day times 30 so that's going to be up there so it's using diesel heating house yeah in my case it makes a lot of sense so i don't really worry about the amount of fuel it's going to run through because again it's free except for uh, shipment and the filter media but besides that yeah, I get the fuel for free, I just have to filter it because it's a really crappy fuel. So in comparison to central heating with gas, uh, this thing, even if it has run, say, which is a lot, 100 liters a month, which is about 100 euros, it's still 250 to 260 euros cheaper than if I ran central heating inside of my house because that's really, really expensive. Everybody needs to do these things the way they want to do it. If they want to have a marine sap, build a marine sap. If you want to do the recycling sap, use recycling sap. If you don't like something, change it out. But the environment dictates how these things should be set up and not a YouTuber with the knowledge of just a couple of sensors or somebody like me that's a very specific how we do things because guess what i do things completely different than for example you and that's the same with the environment for here it doesn't freeze in the winter or not a lot the majority of the time it's above freezing but the humidity is a very high however when you live in a place where it's minus 45 to minus 50 degrees the humidity is very low and it's very cold. So over there, the majority of people drive 4x4s. But I drive also in a convertible in the freaking winter because guess what? It's capable of going 15 to 20 degrees Celsius right here. And when the sun is shining, I drop the top and drive around. And the people that live in minus 45 to 50 degrees, they're probably not going to do that. So there is a difference in how we do things and how they are doing things and it's also the same with diesel heaters or heaters in general it's not always about efficiency it's also sometimes about health 